views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Vice President of Planning, Marketing, and Public Relations, your co-host for tonight's Health Beat television program. We welcome you, our many viewers, and as always, encourage you to continue participating in the program by calling 718-960-7261 with any questions you may have. That's 718-960-7261. And we promise to do our very best to keep you medically informed and healthy by discussing <coughs> topics that are of interest to you. Please tune in every Monday evening from 6.30 to 7 p.m. on Channel 67. And you can also find out more information about Bronx Lebanon and its many community services online at our website, bronxcare.org. Tonight, my co-host, Dr. Milton Gums, Bronx Lebanon's Vice President and Medical Director, and I will be discussing the obstetrics area, and in particular, how to deliver a healthy baby. Yes, Errol, this has increasingly become an important topic since the Zika virus has come into play. Joining us this evening are two experts in the field, Dr. Karen um, Beckerman, Director High Risk Obstetrics Gynecology, and Abby and Melissa Resnick, um, nurse, midwife, and, as and associate midwifery director at Bronx Lebanon Hospital. Now, before we hear from both of our panelists, once again, let me encourage you, our viewers, to call in with any questions or comments you may have. The number to call is 718-960-7261. That's 718-960-7261. And please call us. Now, let me start the program, since Dr. Gums mentioned the Zika virus, by asking you to provide our viewers with your expert opinion regarding the Zika virus. What should women in our community be concerned about? Thank you very much. Uh, this is an excellent topic uh, because we get a lot of questions uh, in our clinics right. and in the hospital about Zika. The important thing for New Yorkers and uh, individuals right. living in the continental United States is that there have been no transmissions within the continental United States, the 48 uh, states, right. uh, from person to person. The cases that we have seen have been among travelers, people returning uh, from Latin America who have acquired the infection there. I see. The uh, virus appears to be associated with problems in developments of the fetus. Right. It also occasionally has a complication for ad adults who get the virus in something called Guillain-Barre disease. Right. Still, let me emphasize again that you cannot catch Zika here in the United States. It is those who have traveled to Latin America, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico and the Caribbean who are at risk. Okay. Okay, I'm going to ask you to just tell us what's Guillain-Barre, what's that sort of, not in detail, but... Oh, that's a very good question because that can happen after any viral infection. It's very rare, but we do recognize it, and it is a general uh, breakdown of the nervous system, and people survive with modern medical intensive care, but in a former era, it could have been deadly. Sure. Expanding on Mr. Schneer's question a little more, what should pregnant women do if they consider having a pregnancy? Is there some way? Vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Zika virus. Yeah. In other words, what he's talking about, I if think, is traveling, traveling abroad. Traveling should abroad. they not travel abroad? Similar to what uh, some of the Olympic team members are doing in terms of not even participating. Right. I learned long ago that I cannot um, com command my patients to do, do anything. anything. I can educate them, though, so that they can make their own best informed decision. And what I share with my patients is that the Zika virus is uh, active in Latin America and the Caribbean, and that they should carefully consider their travel plans uh, before leaving. Right. 
I also counsel them that all forms of available in, uh, insect repellents are completely safe in pregnancy and that they should use them liberally uh, to protect themselves when they're outdoors. Right. There are other mosquito-borne illnesses uh, which, while not, not generally life-threatening, right. can be prevented by the use of window screens, air conditioning, and insect repellent. Right. Well, the question I was going to follow up uh, on Dr. Gums is, is not only the Zika virus, but some of the other diseases that uh, infectious diseases in particular that women uh, have to be aware of. Perhaps you can uh, share that with our viewers. You mean when well. they're pregnant? When they're pregnant or considering pregnancy. Well, that's a very long list. And I would say that Bronx Lebanon is an exceptional institution in the strength of its in infectious disease program, of which I am also a part. Right. And in the Infectious Dis Div Disease Division, we deal with infections like HIV, which as we know generally is sexually acquired in this yes. day and age. We deal with malaria, yeah. and that is acquired by individuals returning or immigrating from right. uh, malaria endemic areas. We have not seen malaria transmitted in the United States in right. very many years and many, many other infections that we deal with all the time, viral and otherwise. I would say that it's important for pregnant women to understand the availability of safe vaccinations against many viral illnesses, right. such as hepatitis B, which is safe to vaccinate against in, in pregnancy, and influenza, which is also safe and important to be vaccinated against in pregnancy. Right. Okay. Uh, moving back to Grung here, uh, tell us something about um, the, the obstetrical, obstetrical services at Bronx Lebanon. Let's give Ms. Resnick a chance <laughs> yeah. to uh, respond. Uh, well, I think the obstetrical services at Bronx Lebanon is incredibly unique um, because you have so much choice. Um, whether you want care with a board certified obstetrician or with a nurse midwife, you have many choices for a low risk normal pregnancy, for a high risk pregnancy. Um, all of this is offered at Bronx Lebanon. And when it comes to delivery services, you also have the opportunity for uh, hydration and mm -hmm. uh, in labor. I was delivered by an uh, midwife. Yeah, that you were way. lucky. I was lucky. <laughs> I, I, and I came Look how great, great you turned out. <laughs> okay. right. yeah. How are the newborn services? let's be more specific, delivered at Bronx Lebanon? Well, there's a newborn nursery um, for the healthy newborn. Right. If the newborn is premature right. or unhealthy in any way, there's a step-down unit or a neonatal intensive care unit. Right. So it's really the best of all worlds at right. Bronx Lebanon that we can provide right. our moms, families, and babies. And Dr. Beckman, what are the services that are available for more complicated pregnancies? Perhaps you can share that with our viewers. We have a uh, robust uh, high-risk obstetric service. We have three board, f board certified maternal fetal medicine right. specialists. We offer um, obstetric ultrasound and uh, antenatal testing for our clients on site, on the same floor as our clinic which is a, a big convenience uh, for our clients. Right. And in addition, I would also say that we have a, a very um, admirable collaboration in place between obstetrics, midwifery, and newborn medicine. We meet every week to discuss interesting and challenging cases so that the transition from pregnancy to mother and newborn right. is as seamless as possible. Now, just what percentage? of uh, deliveries are high risk. Is there an approximate percentage? I, w I would say, you know, there's high risk and then there's high risk. Um, for any, we see about 40% of our patients in the high risk clinic right. at any one time. But many of those women go back to low risk services with uh, midwives or with general obstetricians. So uh, they just, we've, consulted, we've made an opinion and given some advice, and they're fine with their regular obstetric care. In terms of very high risk, I would say it's between, it's about 15 percent right. probably. Okay, when, an easy question, when is a C-section necessary? Well, that and depends on who part. you ask. Okay, <laughs> right, okay. 
So, um, what, what's the controversy? So, as I'm sure uh, both of you know, and, and certainly Ms. Resnick and I know very well, the C section rate in this country is rapidly increasing. Why? I think I can't answer that question. But what do you, you don't want to think about it? I mean, no, I, I think I, I about have, it a I lot. I have ideas myself, but go ahead. Yeah. Um, I think that um, we have fewer and fewer caregivers who are able and expert in vaginal delivery in this day and age. Okay, and how long do you stay in the hospital after the C-section? After C-section. So our standard um, at Bronx Lebanon and at other hospitals is uh, to go home on the third day after a C-section delivery. Mm -hmm. I will say that at Bronx Lebanon, we are very liberal in um, keeping mothers longer who need to stay longer. Mm -hmm. uh, and that could be for a variety of reasons. And right. But generally, most mothers go home with their babies on the third day after yeah. C-section. Good. Mm -hmm. okay. And if I can just yeah, sure. touch base sure. on the C-section issue, you know, it, it's known that the midwifery care decreases the mm -hmm. C-section rate. So, you know, we have a robust midwifery program um, at Bronx, Lebanon, mm -hmm. and the women that we care for have a very low C-section rate. Why? Um, because I think that midwifery focuses on the normal, natural process. No, I don't go uh, And it may be long. It may be uncomfortable. We certainly have methods to take care of the discomfort, mm -hmm. but it's about really having the woman's labor in their own environment, in a normal, natural process, without uh, being rushed or hasted with uh, intervention sure. and medication. Mm -hmm. Good, that's right. right. Now, on a totally different subject, what about induction of labor? When is that uh, a necessity? How is that determined, and uh, what exactly happens? Well. Our thinking about induction of labor has uh, changed over the last 30 years. Right. One thing that we take more seriously mm -hmm. than we used to is pregnancies that go post-term. So that now in this day and age... How long post-term? Two weeks. Occasionally one week, but usually the limit is two weeks post-term. That would be after 42 weeks of pregnancy. Um, we. Uh, we now take that very seriously because we can exactly predict the most women's due dates. Right. Before we had routine ultrasounds, we could not do that. Right. Yeah. And so it was less clear what was going on with our clients. Right. Now what is involved in the induction of a pregnancy? Perhaps you can be a little more detailed. We try to wait as long as we can right. uh, till the time is right till we can see that the woman's birth canal is ready, till right. the woman is ready, till the baby is ready. And sometimes mom is ready before baby, and sometimes baby is ready yeah. before mom. Yeah. Right. And uh, we have two general methods. One is to give s strong medications for which mother and baby need to be closely um, monitored. Right. And that induce contractions. And the other is that we're able to dilate the cervix uh, from below with use of an actual little, little balloon. So uh, some women get both of those methods, some women just get one. Right. Okay. Let me just ask a question. I shouldn't, but what's the magic of 42 weeks? What, what's, what happens? What are you worried about? It's not really m magic. Yeah. Um, well, the placenta is the shortest lived organ in the Excuse human me, body. Excuse me, we have to interrupt you a second. We have <laughs> a call from Laura. Laura is on the phone. Laura? Yes? You have a question for us? Yes, I'd just like to ask you, um, if a pregnant woman wants a, ce a cesarean, can she automatically get one, or you have to wait to the bitter end? C-section. Well, we do a lot of C-sections for a lot of reasons. And I would say that the right of self-determination is a principle of the 21st century. And I advise women who don't need cesarean sections strongly against them because they can be associated with a lot of complications, 
even though they're very safe in this day and age. And the issue is not so much with a single cesarean section, but the complications we are seeing all over the United States is with two, three, four, and five cesarean sections where complications get very, very high. But let me ask the question. What's a long time before the C-section? You know, if a patient is having pain, how long do you feel comfortable waiting? Is it 24 hours, 48 hours, that type of thing? Or does it make a difference? Well, maybe Ms. Resnick can yeah. talk to that. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a unique experience yeah. for everyone. Yeah. Pain we can manage. Um, it's yeah, really the baby think, yeah, coming down the birth canal. Right, yeah, you know, yeah. um, it's the passenger, it's the passage. Yeah. Uh, everything has to mesh. If they don't mesh, um, and it's proven that you've been pushing for three hours or more. Yeah, but I'm, uh, I'm talking 24 hours. Well, well again, early yeah. labor can take a yeah. long time. Yeah. So to say that someone is in labor for 24 hours, it would be more unlikely because active mm -hmm. labor uh, is not that long. Okay, okay. We I have another call we from another Lorena. Call. Lorena, you're on yeah. the air. I, I had a question um, about weight gaining during pregnancy. I guess I wanted to know why your feet and your joints get so swollen and if there's anything you can do to prevent that or stop that or treat it. Is there some kind of medicine you can take or is there some kind of diet substitution you can do? You have the question. So uh, swelling of, of your legs in pregnancy is something that many, many women have to deal with. I can tell you that I have more knowledge about it, not from my medical training, but from my experience uh, with pregnancy personally. And for me, as I worked through pregnancy, I found the key to uh, preventing swelling uh, and painful swelling of my legs was wearing maternity support hose. They're mm. hot, they're a pain in the neck to put on, but man oh man do they work. Other swelling can be due to complications of pregnancy which you need to talk to your doctor about. Okay, okay. thank you very much. All right, on that note, question. let's pause for a short break and when we return we will yeah. continue our discussion Caregiver. as well as take calls <laughs> from you, our viewers. <laughs> Once again, the number to call is 718-960-7261. That's 718-960-7261. And please call us. In this age of technology, Bronx Lebanon Hospital Center is advancing computer systems to benefit its patients and the community. What is really important is that the technology we provide is truly helping the community. And as a result, our physicians, nurses, and staff are really succeeding in optimizing patient's care and access, as well as patient safety and satisfaction. Our staff relies on the comprehensive health information systems we have in place to expedite the registration process and make the appropriate medical decisions regarding treatment and follow-up care. At Bronx Lebanon, highly specialized care is being provided by an expert staff using state-of-the-art technology. Bronx Lebanon surgeons are also at the forefront of advancing technology. We certainly have cutting-edge technologies in place, but what is especially important here is that we have surgeons, nurses, and technicians who deeply care about our patients. Bronx Lebanon's ear, nose, and throat department is also performing highly complex surgical procedures. We are bringing all types of technological advances to our ENT patients, including the latest in facial plastic and reconstructive surgery designed to achieve successful outcomes. And Bronx Lebanon's orthopedic team is keeping patients moving in the right direction. We have leveraged our own patient outcomes data as well as national studies to achieve the highest level of care in hip and knee replacements. Our spine, hand, and foot surgery as well as sports medicine programs continue to be of the highest caliber. Extraordinary is the best way to describe the sight-saving surgeries performed by Bronx Lebanon's ophthalmologists. We are using sophisticated laser and complex surgical procedures, as well as microscopic technologies to protect and restore vision. Bronx Lebanon is also delivering exceptional services for women. Its one-stop shopping approach means easy access to a wide range of general and specialized inpatient and outpatient OBGYN services. We provide women in the community with a luxurious birthing spa in a state-of-the-art labor and delivery unit 
and comprehensive outpatient GYN services at the hospital's new health and wellness center. When necessary, advanced robotic surgery and other related procedures are available. In the ER, we see some of the most dramatic examples of Bronx Lebanon staff and technology in action. Our expert and experienced ER team is helping patients overcome all types of emergencies. We are effectively using high-tech equipment to monitor, track, and evaluate a patient's condition prior to making the decision to admit, discharge, or extend their observation in our recently completed 11-bay unit. And technological advances are changing the practice of nursing. Our nurses are fully prepared and eager to meet the challenges and benefits that technology has to offer. We are now using an electronic medical record which is providing nurses with the time to do what they do best, provide excellent care for our patients. Bronx Lebanon is also leading the way in anesthesiology, dentistry, family medicine, neonatology, neurosurgery, pediatrics, psychiatry, and long-term care. Welcome back to HealthBeat. We come to you live on BronxNet every Monday evening from 6.30 to 7 p.m. Please call us at 718-960-7261 with any questions you may have, and we will certainly do our best to answer them. Now let's continue our discussion. We often ask our panelists to share their respective backgrounds with our viewers. In other words, what interested you in pursuing a career in the obstetrics area, the midwifery area of obstetrics? Let me start with you, uh, Dr. Beckerman. I always was thrilled with the idea of pregnancy and having kids. Right. And I went to medical school and found obstetrics very exciting. And I was fortunate to be able to rotate through a service in Bristol, England, right. where I worked with British midwives. Right. And I thought that was the best care I had ever seen mm. in any hospital anywhere. And I decided to go into OB. When I did my residency in obstetrics in the Midwest, I became very fascinated with the whole issue of preeclampsia. And I found the idea of how little we knew about it and what a terrible problem right. it is, very attractive. And that attracted me to research and to work in maternal fetal medicine. And Ms. Resnick, how about you? Um, I always wanted to be a nurse. Um, I didn't want to be a physician. I loved nursing for right the difference and the care of the patients. Um, I think what attracted me to midwifery is the fact that I can empower women in the choices that mm -hmm. they make. And it wasn't always about delivering babies, um, like much of midwifery, it was about routine GYN healthcare, making right. sure the women were asking the right questions and the care that they were getting so they could be part of their own healthcare. Right. Okay, let me display my ignorance. I would like for both of you to tell me what is centering. You want me to? Yeah. Centering is a model of prenatal care that has been developed over the last 20 years. Okay. And that's my expertise on the topic. <laughs> <laughs> so Ms. Resnick is our okay. expert. Yeah, tell me because, yeah. Centering uh, is a group focused uh, prenatal care um, that is uh, available at Bronx Lebanon, not available Except in other parts of the Bronx. What makes it terrific is that women and their family or partners w are with other women who have the same due date uh, as do they. Mm -hmm. So if everybody is due in January, you're in a group class. Not only do you have the camaraderie, the community-centered approach, you also have individual care from the midwife who is running the, mm -hmm. the centering uh, group. Uh, and you have education from other providers, a social worker, a nutritionist. Yeah. Um, and you're with other women who may have the same complaints, such as swelling in pregnancy, how do I get rid of it? Um, they talk about postpartum breastfeeding. Um, and, and so you're really with a great group of women and their families yeah. and their partners um, who, can, who can corroborate the things that you're going through. Right. Okay. Now tell us about the Bronx Lebanon Birthing Spa, and in particular, uh, the Whirlpool Delivery yeah. Process. Who's eligible, how does it work, and how successful has it been? 
Well, the hydrotherapy is available in three of the rooms on our labor and delivery suite. We right. encourage all women and their families to take a tour. They're offered every Friday uh, okay. so you can see the environment. Uh, I think as, as long as you're of, of low risk and not tremendously high risk, uh, it's available to you and it's a great thing to relieve pain if you're interested in that instead of uh, medicinal. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's some women who like to deliver in the tub, uh, but it's really terrific for pain relief and the majority of women are right. eligible for it. You want to tell us a little bit about diets for the pregnant lady? Well, I think nutrition is incredibly important in pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, and again, Bronx Lebanon offers a nutritionist who's available, and uh, the midwives also are trained in nutrition. Um, and I think it's a, a false to believe that you're eating for two. You're just eating healthy. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in the Bronx that can be challenging, um, but your, your nutrition is incredibly important for a healthy baby and increasing the protein What in about diet. exercise? Exercise is also important. As long as it doesn't involve direct abdominal contact, you should exercise every day. You should continue what you normally do because you are not sick. Pregnancy yeah. is a healthy, normal part uh, of a woman's life. Okay. On uh, that note, we've certainly had an informative discussion. Let me thank you, Ms. Resnick and Dr. Beckerman, for joining with Dr. Gums and myself on tonight's thank Healthbeat you. television program. Thank you. And most importantly, let me thank you, our viewers, for tuning in this evening. If you, our viewers, have any questions or need assistance, I encourage you to call our Physician Referral Service. That is 718-999-BRONX. That is also 718-992-7669. Or you can refer to our website at bronxcare.org. Good night and stay healthy. See you in a couple of weeks.